outside the box. You guys don't seem to mind stepping outside of your comfort zone, or at least the zone your fans might be comfortable with. Uh, even though it didn't work out between labels, uh, you've recorded with Kanye West. Uh, you've recorded uh, his song Stronger, as well as Lady Gaga's Bad Romance. Do you ever worry about a possible backlash for making such bold changes? Absolutely not. Good. Absolutely not. End of answer. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say no. Okay. I mean, they're, they're very talented. and You know what? We, uh, it was inspiring. It was fun. You know, it's fun to, to, to do those covers. It was a really yeah. great time, you know. And you get to put your stamp on it and reinvent it in a way that we would do the song. And those are great songs. And like Shannon said, it's just a great time. And it's fun. And we're, we feel like it, we get asked yeah. to do it. Yeah. You know, you could ask anybody when they asked us. So. It's pretty cool. I remember when Seether started, I asked Sean Morgan about, um, you know, they had such a Nirvana sound. And uh, I think he was doing a cover song at a concert. And I, and I asked him if he would ever record something like that he said yep maybe but also uh, something that someone would never imagine us doing like maybe an old Portis head song and then they came out and did that 80s cover song and it was just funny it was great yeah. well we never re have recorded a cover song for a record we have only done these recorded live, live yeah. and uh, you know for a station and we did actually a couple of them for the station in yeah. England called Radio 1 and the first one that we did uh, for Kanye West Stronger actually won the best cover in the entire 10 years that they had done these things called Live Lounge over there. It was the best one, which is pretty crazy um, because we were just panicked that we would be able to, you know, nail it in one take live in front of everybody in the wow. UK, you know, millions of people. And this last one we did, uh, the Gaga cover, was also not only recorded live on the radio, but it was live streamed across, you know, the interweb. So it, it was uh, it was just a fun thing to do. It's good to mix it up, but it's not like we're not releasing these songs as singles or anything. Uh, the first release from This Is War was Kings and Queens. Um, where in the writing process did this song occur? Was it uh, one of the first or, or towards the end? Sometimes it seems like the first single is almost a song that was an afterthought. That wasn't the case here, but I do think that this song was written by Jared on our way to South Africa, and then it was kind of finished there. But this song was lucky to even be on the record. It certainly wasn't an afterthought. We knew it was a, 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 a great song. But, so, but it almost was not on the record, and then all of a sudden it ended up to be the first single. Well, because we couldn't crack it. There was a, a, a songwriting issue there that, you know, it was just, I mean, Jared was like pounding his head against the table for months for, with the song. And then finally at the end, of the 11th hour, like almost always, something happened, and they got into the studio and just, they figured it out, and then it was like, holy shit, this song is great, you know? Do you want to expand on that? It was really just a case of an arrangement issue. We knew we had something special in the song, but it was being weighted down by an arrangement issue and not cracking the bridge. And, you know, we had Flood gave us a, good, a great shot with the bridge, and we had this kind of Depeche mode... Uh, Which is kind of cool. It was cool. It was yeah. cool, but it just <laughs> yeah, it didn't, didn't work. Fit. Yeah, yeah. It didn't. It didn't work. We all loved it for a minute, yeah. and then you know, a few weeks later. So it's nice about having the chance to live with the songs for so long before you release in the public, because you can kind of give a little bit of thought uh, to what's going on. And you know, we were trying to to go a certain direction and have a lift to the bridge, but really, what it wanted to do was to yeah. really just kind of go into a different space and be more atmospheric. Okay. A um, couple more questions. Sure, Let's see. Uh, the second release from This Is War, uh, the title track. What's going on? Uh, when I hear it, it seems like it would be a great song to perform live. <coughs> Am I right on that? This Is War yes. it is one of the biggest songs of our entire set. It just came out a couple of weeks ago as our new single. And it is, it's pure chaos, as you'll see at the show tonight. It's got it, quite a build. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is that a crescendo? Yes, it is. It's got a huge crescendo. You are correct. It's got a, a lot of peaks and valleys. It, you know, just when you th thought it was, it could, it could go no further, it goes even higher. And uh, I think sometimes we didn't appreciate that song as much uh, as we mm. do now it's true. because it's it was really one of true. the first songs. I, I and it really wasn't a song that 
it presented some sonic challenges, but it didn't really have many songwriting challenges. I had a, I never, I, I didn't figure out what I wanted to sing in the bridge until like, really late in the, great, in the game. But it became one of the lyrics that's talked about a, a lot on, uh, amongst our fans. But it is, it's, it's a very special song. It's turned into a massive hit in Europe for us already, which is kind of weird because they go through s singles much faster. So they've already, do they? Yeah. They Oh, we just, yeah. Because six weeks. I mean, I'm in seven, a business here, seven, and it's, weeks, it's changing so radically yeah. just uh, almost every year with with technology um, and yeah. how fast or maybe short people's attention spans are. So but it seems Europe, like in the states you play a song for a long, long time, and it takes longer for a song to get familiar with people, for people to learn about the song. And uh, in in the UK, I mean, they they will play your song for seven weeks. And then, and if it's a the hit, they'll play it in recurrence or whatever. But uh, they want to be on to the next song, and they've been, they've, it's, it's just turned into a monster for us. And we actually just, Shannon doesn't know about this, but we sold out Wembley Arena on our last tour. We did our first ever arena tour in Europe, and it was amazing. I mean, playing the size of places Bon Jovi is playing tonight all over Europe. Wow. And yeah, it's pretty, pretty humbling, <laughs> pretty gratifying, and makes you very thankful, uh, uh, which which we are. Um, but we just, uh, the, two days ago, got an offer to go back to London to play, well, maybe I shouldn't say this yet, and I can't say this on air. This probably won't air for at least a month, yeah. just to let you know. Okay. Th this, I mean, I'm going to put it on uh, KMOD.com tomorrow. Well, anyway, we got an offer to play this uh, uh, video, I, can't, I shouldn't say it on, okay. on air, um, that we may accept, but it was, it's like one of those mind-boggling things where you're, be on a stage where you know Madonna and Prince and U2 and all these people are playing, and uh, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty yeah, cool. I love it. <laughs> I'm just picturing it. It's uh, that's it's amazing from where we come from to doing what we're doing now. It's pretty fucking crazy. It's sick. Agree. Agree. Concur. Right. Concur. Oh <laughs>